According to the National Cancer Institute, more than 60,000 Americans will be diagnosed with leukemia this year. And what could be a major medical breakthrough, researchers from Rice University and the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center have discovered potential new drugs that could possibly help deliver a deadly one-two punch to leukemia. Now joining us this morning to talk about the findings is Rice biochemist Natasha Kirienko. Natasha, good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Thank you for spending some time with us. Uh, can you tell us right off the top more about this groundbreaking research? I'd be delighted to. In brief, we collaborated with a talented team at MD Anderson Cancer Center here in Houston, Dr. Marina Konoplyova and her lab, to look for new treatments that can more effectively target leukemia cells while having less of target effect on healthy cells. Some previous research in my lab showed that leukemia cells are genuinely sensitive to damage to their mitochondria, which are an essential part of these cells. We discovered that causing mitochondrial damage is very effective in killing acute myeloid leukemia cells. In contrast, healthy cells seem to be able to generally repair this damage. Broadly speaking, we looked for chemicals that would be at least 10 times more effective in killing leukemia cells than healthy cells. But we found some that are even 20 times more effective. Interesting. Um, the report showed that some, I guess, some innovative methods were used to, uh, to reach this discovery. What's the story there? In many cancer studies, researchers use cancer cells from patients that are grown in dishes. These cells then will be exposed to a large number of different chemicals to see what kind of new drugs might kill cancer cells. Unfortunately, this approach makes it hard to determine whether any effects are specific. In other words, you can find a chemical that kill cancer cells, but it might kill healthy cells just as well. As I keep telling people, if it was only about killing bad guys, cancer cells or bacterial infections, then bleach would be the only medicine needed. To avoid side effects, we tested chemicals in a very small worm called C. elegans instead. Although it is biologically different from humans, it has many features in common. And if the new treatment simply kills the worm, we know it will not be useful. Right, right. So, so does that sort of lead you to a new and different treatment, treatment method based on how uh, leukemia is currently treated? Interestingly, the treatments most commonly used for leukemia also damage mitochondria. But in most cases, this is something of an accident of their function, as they are mostly intended to be doing other things. With the new compounds we found, their main activity is damaging mitochondria. This has two advantages. First, it means that the new drugs have more controlled amount of damage, which makes it easier to find the dose to kill cancer cells, but not healthy cells. Second, they be combined with current leukemia treatments, resulting in improved cancer-specific effects. Both of these factors reduce side effects. Now, through the research, ha have you figured out how this will be applied to leukemia patients, or is this something that now doctors have to go and, and start working with individual patients for individual treatment? Uh, this is one of the steps for future discoveries. Leukemia is a very diverse type of cancer with a variety of different mutations. So this is something we plan to do in the future to test how different genetic patterns that seen in different patients will affect drug leukemia to identify the cohort that is most likely to benefit from this treatment. And of course, we need to do some additional work to see if we can further optimize the treatment to make it even more specific and further reduce side effects. Now, how long uh, were you working on this project or, or does the work continue? My lab has been working in this area for about seven years since I was recruited to Rice University by a grant from the Cancer Prevention and Research Institute of Texas. More recently, we began a very fruitful collaboration with Dr. Kanaplyova's lab at MD Anderson Cancer Center. And they helped us a lot with validating our work in mammalian models. But there is still a fair distance to go before we can start testing these drugs in humans. And of course, we 
plan to continue this line of research. And, and what is that next step to either getting the drugs approved or, I mean, how do you, where do you go next? What is the next step? Uh, a big part of next step is to make sure we have the best route to deliver the drug uh, because this is also an important part of treatment. Uh, and also we understand the relationship between specific mutations in the given patient's cancer background and drug efficiency. Do you, do you already have some ideas about the delivery method and, and how that's going to go, places that you want to explore? Uh, we tried several methods. They worked with different efficacy, but it also depends what do you formulate it with, uh, what you use as a vehicle. So there is quite a bit of fine tuning ahead of us. Good. And, and do you already have the funding or are you confident you'll receive the funding? Uh, we applied to a number of uh, funding opportunities and uh, we're waiting to hear from those. And of course, we will keep applying. That's great. And where can uh, folks in the audience go to see, uh, to, to read and learn more about the work that you've done already? Rice's University Public Relations Department recently put out some information about the project. That is a good starting point for people to look for specific information about our work. Also, our original article was recently published in journal Leukemia. For general information, American Cancer Society and the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society are two nonprofit organizations that do fantastic work in patient advocacy and have wonderful websites with a lot of general interest information for people who want to know about cancer or leukemia in general. Okay, a couple of great places to go. Natasha Kirienko, Rice Biochemist, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. And, and it's great to learn about all of the research and great work that's going on in the medical community right here in our own backyard. So thanks again, Natasha, for your time. Thank you for the opportunity to speak and have a great day. You too.